The mighty Bowser is nothing short of mighty indeed, but let's say it's also huge, shall we? Here it is next to LEGO Super Mario, so you get a sense of scale. I gotta admit, when this was first announced, I wasn't that excited, as this wasn't what I was expecting following up the NES and the Mystery Block sets, which have been some of my favorite sets done by LEGO, weirdly enough. They were fresh LEGO ideas with some genius mechanisms in there, and to me the mighty Bowser only felt like a big sculpture, definitely more interesting than the Black Panther set as far as big sculptures Lego sets go, but still. But over time it started growing into me as I realized it had a bit more to it than just being a big Bowser figure. Now the start of the build going for the base Bowser rests on top of got me in the wrong mood straight away. It was a good introduction to realize how big Bowser would be on top of it, but at the same time it felt way too big for what I thought it did. Just a glorified display base. Later on I found out there's some play features that go with it when we use some of the LEGO Super Mario playable characters, as there is a scan code even in the slide out mechanism. But still, it could have been done smaller or non-existent at all and it would bring the cost of the set down by about 20 or 30 dollars. Regardless of all of that, there's nice detailing in the form of the cobblestone details on top, next to the dark red carpet I wanna say. There's some spiked details surrounding the base, and the towers on the sides with the dark red banners printed 2x2 Bowser tiles topped by some flames look alright. But even when you place Bowser on top of all of this, all of it still feels small, despite being big, if that makes sense. Bowser, on the other hand, looks amazing. His bright color scheme brought to life with relatively common LEGO colors is spot on. The yellow for arms and legs, white, green and tan for the shell, black and grey for the spiked accessories, red and tan for the face, though the bright green ends up being the more uncommon of colors used. In doing so, LEGO has probably made a lot of element recolors to get to this result, which is great for part collectors. Now it's hard to keep track on new elements and recolors, but the legs and tail look amazingly shaped due to the use of fairly recent elements done in yellow, like the Porsche slope as I like to call it and these 3x3 rounded corner slope which this set has a lot of. The arms and hands aren't as nicely shaped in my opinion, but a lot of it has to do with inched sections to pose Bowser, which I'll show later on. The shell, however, is brilliant. The shapes on the white border look really good and were made with a combination of 2x2 round bricks, plates and tiles, and a bunch of these quarter cylinder elements in white to great effect. Not only that, the actual faceted green shell shapes and the way the angles of it all come together despite there being some gaps in there, and I'm probably gonna sound like a broken record here, look brilliant. They really do, because this is not the kind of shapes and angles you're used to seeing from LEGO sets, right? On top of which, there's a combination of these two elements for the spikes final touch. And all of this was achieved with a surprisingly low amount of LEGO technique, which I can get behind. Finally, Bowser's head greatly benefits from newer elements LEGO has been making, like these 4x4 rounded domes for the nose section, or some more of these 3x3 corner slopes for the cheeks and back of the head. I wish I had such a nice jawline as Bowser and his fiery red eyebrows and mohawk sealed the deal. His eyes are printed 2x2 round bricks that sit on top of turntables so they can be turned to look to the side and the eyebrows connected on ball joints can be moved to create different expressions. But that's not the only thing that moves as this old build was designed to be a puppet of sorts. You grab him from the back and move him around and since the legs aren't locked in place they move in a realistic way when you do grab him and place him on the floor. The arms and hands have several degrees of movement due to the shoulder, elbow and wrist joints which allow to pose him a bit, but the highlight has to go for the add motions that can be seamlessly controlled to an amazing and fun result. The opening of the mouth is controlled via this lever here and the side to side motion of the head is controlled with a sliding assembly that can be pushed on both sides of Bowser to return it to its initial position. Now, you would be inclined to think that to achieve these crazy amounts of LEGO technique and complex mechanisms have had to be used, but as LEGO Super Mario products continue to show me over and over again, they do all of their magic with relatively simple and straightforward techniques, which blows me away every single time. On top of it all, Bowser has a shooter on his mouth, so opening the mouth all the way will shoot a fireball that he probably would want to aim at Mario most of the time. Because 
Yeah, there's some extra play on top of the puppet Bowser functions. If you remember, there's this Eden scan code that will trigger a boss fight. Mario will have to jump on top of Bowser to be able to defeat him. I guess this can be an interesting play for two players, though I don't think any kid would be able to comfortably hold Bowser as he is too big and heavy. As it looks like Mario has defeated Bowser and the winning song starts playing, it gets interrupted to start the second stage of the boss fight in which Mario can't do a thing to him and only gets hurt. If Bowser destroyed enough stuff, these pillars might have fallen down, revealing a POW block, which Mario can jump on to disrupt Bowser, continue his attack and finally beat him. If you use this together with a starter course set, you start your level as usual with the start pipe, Run through the level you've built and find Bowser at the end, which when defeated will trigger the end of the level, as opposed to having to step on the starter scores and tile. It's a neat thing to have, though I'm not sure a lot of kids will have access to Bowser, as this is an adult-oriented product in both age marking on the box and complexity of the build. I paid 270 euros for this set on release date, which price per piece ratio-wise was good on a set that has no stickers. Looks really good when built, has amazing play features slash functions and was a really cool building experience overall. I didn't really need the base to be honest, 20 to 30 dollars could have been saved there, bringing the cost down to 250, which would have made it a slightly more appealing product to people. I still think it's worth it, and I was happy to pay the price on a LEGO product that proved to be, once again, similar to the previous direct to consumer LEGO Super Mario sets. Entertaining, fresh, and completely out of the ordinary when compared to, let's call them, the normal LEGO experience of cars, buildings, and spaceships. Let me know what you guys think, subscribe so I can make my money back and I'll see you all in the next video.